Hey everybody, I'm Jack with River Jack Studio, and I am notorious for tearing up tools. I've been tearing up my chisels for months now by using that large framing hammer, especially with the waffle cone head. So I decided to go ahead and make a wood mallet to be able to use in my wood shop instead of all these construction hammers. I wanted to use some pretty hard materials because I would be beating on this thing pretty much every day. So I decided to settle on some hard maple and purple heart. My maple piece I had was cut pretty badly, so I ended up gluing it down with a couple wedges to a piece of plywood to flatten one side, then taking it off the piece of plywood, flatten the other side using my planer. I then took it over to my table saw and cut off two strips. These pieces would measure 15 inches long by one and three quarter inches wide and just over five eighths inch thickness. I make sure to oversize all my cuts because I will trim them later. After this, I just cut the large maple piece to final width to use for the mallet head, which would be four and a quarter inches with the thickness being one and a quarter inches, just like the handle piece. I need my final length for the mallet head and at the miter saw, I cut it at just over five inches. I cut two of these because I would end up cutting one in half to use for the outer sections of the mallet head. I know these measurements sound kind of sporadic, but I had seen some previous mallets and I wanted a little larger one. I just added 15% to all those measurements to give me mine. I now had all the maple I needed cut, and now it was time to cut the remaining purple heart pieces that I also needed. I first cut a 15 inch piece off, planed and jointed it as well to be able to cut on my table saw. I cut the same dimensions for the maple handle pieces, and I was now ready to glue up my handle. I just laminated the purple heart in between the two pieces of maple and let it sit for a day. I would continue this theme using the purple heart strips mixed in with the maple and laminate them together. After that's all glued up, I used the remaining purple heart and cut two pieces for the head of the mallet, again using the same dimensions as the maple pieces, but these would only be 3 eighths of an inch thick. I had the general design for the head and I went ahead and unclamped my handle from sitting overnight. I scraped off as much of the excess glue as possible before joining it to make sure that the faces were nice and flat. I then cut off the ends of the handle to give me exactly 14 inches. I then needed to shave the top all the way around to be able to recess the handle into the head of the mallet and use the whole part as a stop for the head. I just took it over my table saw and took off about an eighth of an inch all the way around to be able to let me fit it up inside. I slid the guide over ever so slightly to go all the way to the end and I did this for about five and three quarter inches up the handle to give me a 10 inch piece to hold on to and then have a little bit sticking out of the top. I then took my center maple block that was going to be in the mallet head and cut it in half to be able to fit the handle. I took all the pieces to make sure the grain was oriented the correct way and then using the handle as a guide able to space everything out properly. I clamped everything up and scraped out any glue on the inside of the handle because this would cause clearance issues later on if it was left to dry. I'm pretty bad about tearing up tools and equipment. I've blown a motor in my truck, seized a motor in my sister's car, burned a lawn tractor down to the ground, destroyed dozens of hand tools, not to mention chainsaw bars and chains, tractor discs, and a whole host of other stuff. I'd say only half of these were actually my fault and something I caused, so pretty decent record I might say. I make up for breaking things with what I can fix, and in this instance making a mount, which is pretty ironic. A day goes by and I unclamp everything, taking the head over to my miter saw and squaring up the top and bottom sides of the mallet head. I then take my miter saw and set it at 5 degrees to cut the faces of the mallet. Slanting the face slightly helps when swinging the hammered benchtop level and gives more of a flat contact when striking. After this was finished, I then took my handle over to my vise and cut in some slits to be able to use wedges to snugly mount the mallet head to the handle. I do two on one side and then one through the center as I'm going to use two purple heart and one maple wedge to give it more of an ornate look. This also gives more outward pressure to secure the head. I then smear glue all over the handle and on the inside of the mallet head before sliding it on, and I give it a couple of good love taps to make sure it's nice and seated all the way on. I then add glue to the wedges and first hammer in the two purple heart wedges. Then after they're in, I take a multi-tool and cut the midpoint of the wedges and finally add the maple one to the center and knock it all the way home. 
I felt as though my mallet was still quite blocky, so in usual fashion I wanted to add some dowels to spice it up a little bit. I've used dowels in my past builds including the sushi board and serving tray I'd done earlier. I took my earlier piece of purple heart and sliced off a 7 8 of an inch piece. These were quite large by comparison to the other dowels I had done so I needed to use a table saw mounted jig and use the blade to make a dowel rod perfectly 7 8 of an inch. I took my mallet and traced out the center points to be able to drill out for my dowels and I then spaced them an inch from the sides and due to the gentle slope from the top to the bottom the holes would be offset which would complement the angled cut. This also would help secure the handle even more because it did go through it. I also decided to go ahead and put one through the pommel of the handle as well to complement the head of the mallet. I went ahead and took my 7 8 of an inch Forstner bit and used the center point to mark where I would drill once I got it up on the drill press. I just went all the way through and I wouldn't have to worry about tear out due to the plywood I placed underneath it. After all the holes were done, I took my glue and smeared both the holes and the cut pieces of dowel. Most were just a tight snug fit and I could push them in by hand, but some need a little caressing with, you guessed it, a hammer. I also oriented the grain all the same way as the end grain going in different directions would have driven me insane. After the glue had set up, I then used a hand saw and flush cut all of my dowels. I've been working on a bunch of projects all at the same time, so it feels like this mallet is taking way longer than what it should, and it probably is. I've added a bunch of extra steps by having all these glue ups and all this extra intricacy into this build. It's unfortunate when something so nice takes so long because it's kind of hard to rationalize a cheaper price if I was to sell something like this. I don't think people realize, and I certainly didn't, that quality stuff takes so much extra time to make, including me. Not to mention all the setup for filming I have to do. I could have just made a regular mallet with less intricacy and without the dowels and it would have taken half the time. But I just don't find the plain and normal stuff all that interesting. My favorite thing is to see where somebody has made a really interesting design choice in a build that's as functional as it is artistic. I really like the creative side to this and I don't want to just make plain Jane stuff. Or make the same thing over and over again. My degree is also in STEM, and the vast majority of my time in school was spent doing statistics, programming, reading, and writing. And if you told me in high school that I would end up going into a career that had as much math and reading as I would have now, I would have called you a liar. Even now, after I quit my job, I'm still working on a research paper, which leaves much to be desired on the creative side of my brain. This is like the one thing I get to do where I can really just be creative and not stare at a computer screen all day. Which is really ironic considering that I'm staring at a computer screen right now adding all this audio to this video. Oh well. Speaking of being artistic, I was now ready to finish shaping the handle on the head of my mallet. Normally other mallets have a smaller and narrower handle to just be able to route over and sand. But I wanted to shape mine and give the bottom more of an axe-like flared knob at the end. This method I can also shape it perfectly to my hand size and make it a little more custom. I went over to my belt sander and started at 60 grit and I took off an even amount of material on all the sides to give me a nice slope to it. I just roughed in some pencil marks with a general outline of how I wanted it to end up. I'm pretty detail oriented so I usually just like to rough shape and carve things over just using a template. Again I think it's just more interesting this way. After I got everything roughed in I took my orbital sander and started at 60 grit. Went all the way around the mallet to start my finishing process. After rough sanding, I took my router over with a round over bit and knocked off all the hard edges. This would prevent any splintering and stop the head from falling apart after hitting it over and over again. I also just thought it looked better with the rounded edges. I go ahead and do this to the pommel as well to match the head. This bit was extremely dull and was leaving burning marks all across the mallet, but luckily I started back to sanding at 80 grit and they came right out. After my shape was finished being roughed in, I used my sheet sander as I would be able to follow the same profile more easily while sanding. I then went from 80 all the way to 320 grit on the mallet. On the lower grits I made sure all my lines and slopes were square to each other, making the mallet as balanced as possible. 
After using my sander, after each grit, I would take the paper and hand sand all the edges to make sure I didn't miss anything. I'd also spray it with water to raise the grain all the way until I got to 320. After sanding, I blow it off with some compressed air to remove any of the sawdust left over. I went to go grab my tongue oil to finish the mallet, but it had turned into a gelatinous block, so I actually had to run to Lowe's to pick up another can. Traditionally, oil is used most often for axe handles due to it lasting longer than a wax finish, or lacquer and varnish which provide a surface coating that kind of misses the whole point of having a wooden handle. The ultra smooth surface is not ideal either as it tends to cause blisters. I already wrecked my hands enough so I don't need to do myself any more harm than I already do. I also like tongue oil more than some of the other oils like boiled linseed just because it has better waterproofing qualities. After a couple coats and a few days later, this is what I was left with. Thanks everyone for watching. I'd also appreciate it if you all liked, commented, and subscribed for more woodworking content. Down in the comments, let me know what you all think. I've also listed my other socials and Etsy page if you're interested in buying something from me, or we could even come up with a project to build for you. Thanks everyone, I'll see you all next week. Oh, and here, before I forget, there's a little post credit scene of me actually getting to use the mallet. And I can say it's a lot better off than using a giant framing hammer. <laughs>